Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. The Master's Voice will not be making any announcements today. I received a prophecy from the Lord that has taken most of the afternoon to prepare, and the video for this prophecy is also going to be made. Today is August the 23rd, 2023, and the title of this prophecy is The Land of Mystery Babylon. This prophecy came as I was praying to the Lord today about completely unrelated things, what the Lord began to reveal, the type of judgments that he began to speak, not only against the United States, but also against several European states. I hope that people will be listening to this prophecy with the full understanding that this channel is the last stop before we get into the times that are commonly referred to in Christianity as the end times. This channel is the last stop that we as people on earth are going to make before the Heavenly Father will visit this entire earth in a series of judgments that will truly bring silence to every mouth, will truly bring times of sorrow and grieving upon every head. This is a graphic prophecy, and that is all I am going to say. I am not obligated to say that the prophecy is graphic because in the Bible, prophecies of this nature are simply there. You will be reading and suddenly you will begin to see it taking its turns and twists and it is up to the reader to understand the type of anger that God has to be in to say these things. The prophecy is the land of mystery Babylon, August 23rd, 2023. My hand is against them. The title of this part is my hand is against them. Tell them today that I am against them. I will not remove my judgments nor will I hear their prayers for America. If anyone prays for America, I will ignore it. I will hear no prayer for the judged nation of mystery Babylon. I will not purge them so their sin can be clean, for it is written with an iron pen and it cannot be removed. America will fulfill its role in the scriptures. It is mystery Babylon mother of harlots, whore, fallen, fallen, great Babylon has fallen, and so it will remain. Their sin is on them, and I will not purge it out. So this is the first part of the prophecy that began to come to me as I was praying about unrelated things today. The Lord had been laying on my heart since yesterday, that America's judgment is a final judgment, that it is not the kind of judgment that anyone is going to pray for and say, well, we've heard a few prophecies, but we know that in the Bible, God is a merciful God. And so we're going to gather together and we're going to go and seek his face because Nineveh and all that Nineveh repented. And so can we, and God will receive our repentance. And the Lord was laying on my heart that Nineveh's repentance was received because Nineveh's, Nineveh's repentance was absolute. But the Lord says that America has no remorse in her for the sins that she commits. America is not sorry for the types of abominations and whoredoms, the perversions that have covered her face like a bad rash. The nation makes no apologies for its vast distance from the country that it used to be. The America of even 50 years ago is completely unrecognizable in the America of today. Every sin is defended. Every sin is rapidly on its way through government law to becoming an enforced human right. And so this type of hardened brass forehead that I've been speaking about since the Lord used that term on America in 2021, early 2021, this kind of hardened countenance is what the Bible calls brazenness. When your countenance is brazen, then I upload a prophetic clip to a platform and people will come and begin to say the most foul language against myself and against the Lord. 
Americans have no fear of God for the most part. The majority of the nation has no problem using Jesus's name and four letter words in the same sentence where Jesus is the subject and object of the four letter words being spoken. And so since yesterday, the Lord was laying several things on my heart. And one of the things that he was laying on my heart, which will turn up in this prophecy is he kept telling me, I have no quarrel with the foreigners celestial. I have no quarrel with the foreigners. My anger is not against them. It is against the nation of Babylon. And so I brought an old prophecy here and the prophecy is simply entitled fire. Since the comments are closed for the time being to give people to hear these words and absorb them to listen and to pay attention Please listen to the names of the prophecies, and then you can simply go to the YouTube channel dashboard, or you can go to the blog www.themasters-voice.com, and you can use the search box at the bottom of the blog and put in the title, just put in fire, for instance, and the prophecy will come up in the search results. So in that prophecy, the Lord, um, said that he was going to judge America. And he said, he announced it that day. And that was at least two years ago in the early part of 2021, where he said he will no longer receive prayer for America. So if anyone prays for America, the Lord said as far back as 2021, that you are wasting your time, that the option of, if my people who are called by my name is not available for America, this is a prophecy that I brought where I said that I saw myself doing online shopping, but every time I was trying to click items in the online store, like grace, mercy, forgiveness, and put them into my cart. I was being prevented. And then the Lord said to me, daughter, look. And when I looked at the top of my shopping profile, it said America. Those things were not available for America. Grace, mercy, forgiveness. I could not click them and put them into America's cart. But once I changed the shopping profile and I put in, for instance, my name, I saw that there was an abundance of good things from God that were available for me to put into my cart. And this is a picture of the Lord saying that individuals who are lifting up prayer for individuals, you know that your granddaughter is stubborn. You know that your grown son of 42 years old is a devoted lifetime atheist trans somebody. You know that your son or daughter is teaching evolution at a high school somewhere and corrupting young minds and destroying their ability to believe in God. You lifting up prayer for that person's heart to change and for them to come to repentance. Yes, the Lord will hear it. But the minute you go and stand before him and start this God bless America, make America great again, any of that, it is not going to work. God is not going to be receiving those prayers or paying attention to them at all. And should Americans consider that their word is higher than the prophetic word of the Lord and they think, well, I don't care what she says. The Bible doesn't stop anyone from praying for their land and you go and do it. The Lord told me that he knows you will do it because you are obstinate as anything and rebellious. And he said to remind you that when he told Moses that they would die in the desert for refusing to enter Canaan. They also said, oh no, we repent. We will now go and enter into the promised land. And they went to do what they were told not to do. And they were slaughtered, a mighty slaughter that day. And that's how they understood that when God says the door is shut, then it is shut. The mother of harlots fallen great Babylon will stay that way. And the Lord says that the sin that is on this country the sin that is upon the land for judgment will stay in place. He says that the sin is inscribed with a pen of iron and the scripture for that can be found in Jeremiah chapter 17. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron with the point of a diamond. It is engraved upon the tablet of their heart and on the horns of their altars while their children remember their altars and the wooden images by the green trees on the high hills. O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give as plunder your wealth and all your treasures and all your high places of sin that are within your borders. And even you yourself 
shall let go of your heritage which I gave you, and I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know. For you have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever. And I've read this passage on camera many times, and it simply says that the sin of a people can be written so deep that there's no way back. Many people don't study the Bible long enough to know, to understand this biblical principle as God, as God has taught us in the word, which is, it's possible to go too far with the Father. It is possible to reach the end of the road. It is possible to cross a boundary where you can't go back. Esau crossed that boundary and he was no longer allowed to keep or enter back into his inheritance. Pharaoh crossed that boundary. He kept pushing the barriers of grace until he and all his people were destroyed. It is possible to reach the end of God's patience and mercy. And when you do that, there can be found no more forgiveness for your sin. To have your sin written with an iron pen means that it has been hammered so deep. When it is engraved with the point of a diamond, it means that a hard substance like a diamond needs to be used to write that sin down because the people are equally as hardened. And it says that it requires a diamond pen to write America's sin upon her heart. Diamonds only write on diamonds. The only thing that you can write on a diamond with because it is so hard is another diamond. And so God is saying the judgment of America will be hard because it will match the hardness of America's heart. And he says that the sin is even written on the horns of the altar. Biblically, the horns of the altar are where Israelites knew to run into the sacred place and hold on to the horns of the altar because it meant that they were begging forgiveness for extremely grievous sins. When you sinned a sin that was above the norm, you could, if you could manage it, run into the sanctuary and grasp onto the horns of the altar. And all the priests knew, and even the king knew, if they brought him news that you were hanging on to the altar's horns, even the king knew that you were begging and pleading for your very life, and sometimes mercy would be granted. But if the Lord says that the sin of a nation has even gone to the altar where mercy is found, and the sin is now in the place where you are supposed to be begging for forgiveness, that truly means that sin has overtaken you and even entered into the place of mercy and grace. And there can be found no recourse for those people. In this passage, Jeremiah 17, 1, 2, 4, please read it. The Lord says that the people will be let go from their heritage that he gave them. That means that they will be driven and cast out of the land. Driven means that circumstances will make certain groups of people leave this country. And Americans are counted within that group. We already know since the prophecies that I brought in 2022 and probably even prior to that, that people are leaking out of this country like water out of a leaky bucket. That little trickle right now that is only happening in the wealthy echelons will eventually become a stream and then a gushing river until you will hear in this prophecy, the Lord says that you who linger here too long, you will either be living in a destroyed landscape that has a curse on it, or you will end up in refugee camps in foreign lands because you waited too long to take your leave. Cast out means that you will now be driven out by force. And I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you do not know. This is speaking of a time of captivity where the people in the United States of America will be bounded up into bundles. They will be tied with zip ties, as I have been saying here since 2020, when I first brought the devastating prophecies of slavery that the Lord said will come back to America for the slavery that America did in the beginning of her rule of establishing herself and also for the many sins such as sexual immorality. The Lord says that people in America hate to dress properly. They hate to wear clothes. They hate to present themselves in a righteous and a modern fashion. They, he said that Americans don't only sell sex, they themselves have become the sex. And for instance, you can see the multiple sex online portals now where young children have access to sell their bodies as visual prostitutes simply by using the telephonic devices that they have and a Wi-Fi connection. And so all of those things, the phrase I have been saying here since the year 2020 is you will be naked in front of who you don't want to be naked. 
Russians and Chinese will bind people up in processing centers and they will take them away from here on ships in a ironic replay of the slavery of the past. For you have kindled fire in my anger that will burn forever. I hope you can hear the exact replication of what I just read in the first part of the prophecy. You have kindled fire in me, God says, that will never forgive what you have done. The second part is this, a coming famine. Judgments are coming to the United States. I will strike the field, the wheat and the barley harvest. Tell them what it means. Terrible hunger, even to the point of cannibalism. Gangs will eat humans and get used to it. It will be their preference for meat. Savagery will descend on them. A man eating his brother, a man eating his wife to stay alive after she has died. They will weep as they do this, for they will be brought so low, yet I will not remove their minds from them. I will stop at this point just to explain the wheat and the barley harvest. It is just a simple example that you can get, I think, from the Exodus story where God was in the process of methodically punishing Egypt for what they had done, and God was really measuring out the types of punishments that they were getting. So please understand, if you truly study the Exodus story, it never needed to get to where it got to. It got to where it got to, not because of God's destructive nature, but because of Pharaoh's destructive and very proud heart. The Bible says that every time Moses came in to the presence of Pharaoh, God hardened his heart. So many people think it's unfair because they felt that God was reaching into Pharaoh's heart and, and physically making it hard. That's not what it means. The process that was happening to Pharaoh is the same process that is happening to Americans right now and also to many people who love America around the world. Every time you hear a prophetic word against this country, the hearts of people are hardened by the word of God, meaning that as the word of God comes to them, it offends them, it enrages them. Them. It causes them to rail, which means to shout very loudly and angrily, and also to curse. So they utter curses against myself, and they utter curses against the Lord's word, which is just as much as cursing the Lord himself, as well as cursing the spirit of the Lord that is inside me, authorizing me to proclaim these words. So every time you hear another prophecy, whoever this applies to, you become hardened, not by God, but by the entry of the word. Every time Moses came in with a new command from the Lord, with a new message from the Lord, that message made Pharaoh harder. And so God then gave a harder punishment the next time. So one of the merciful, more merciful judgments concerning the wheat and barley is that wheat and barley have different flowering seasons. So you don't point plant them at the same time because they don't necessarily need the same kind of sunny conditions, the same kind of rain conditions. This allowed ancient peoples to stagger their harvests. You can plant one in the early season and then it's growing and it's growing and you're knowing, okay, in a few more months, I'm going to get that in. And then in the middle of the first one that you planted, you can start planting the second one. This allowed them to always have a food source planted throughout the year. And so when the Lord sent one of those judgments, I'm not sure if it was the sulfur judgment of the fire falling, or if it was the hail, if it was hail mingled with fire or something else, when he sent that only one crop had been planted. So that judgment only destroyed those plants, whether it was the wheat or the barley planted first. Only the first harvest was destroyed, but the other one was still small and young enough that it did not suffer major damage. In this way, God was demonstrating that even in my anger, I am kind. If I had waited until the wheat was almost ready and until the barley was halfway, when I sent that hail judgment, both wheat and barley would have been destroyed. What God was doing is he may have destroyed what they were hoping for in that season, but he didn't leave them in a condition of famine. But God is saying that when he strikes America's field, he will do it at a time that he will gather and hit all her food surpluses, all the stuff she's growing, 
all the stuff she's trying to put into the silos and put into the storage areas. He said to tell you what wheat and barley means, he will strike them both because famine is going to come to America until people eat people. Roving gangs, you have heard me say, and I have been saying it in a few prophecies because it is truly a grotesque punishment to come upon a nation. This kind of punishment from God has happened before. Israel ate its children before. Other nations have gone into the kind of starvation where they were forced to use humans as a food source. To use a human as a food source means that you have to wipe away all levels of civilization because we are civilized enough to know that we are not each other's food. To take human flesh, to sustain your own flesh, means that you have come below the level of all the animals and you are no different from a tiger that would eat another tiger. And most of those wild animals will not even eat each other if they find a dead one in the field. They know their food. Gangs will get used to eating people and God says it will be their preference for how to get meat. And he said that a savage mask will come on America as people feed on their own family members. And he says that there will be tears as people are forced to do this. And he said, no matter how low this brings people in this country, he will not let you lose your mind over it. That means that you will know what you're doing as you're doing it. And you will feel the pain inside. Whoever this judgment falls on, you will feel that devastation inside to know. This is how low my nation has come, and this is how low I have come with it. America, you will be your own witness as you do this. The Lord says you will have your full understanding as you do this, mean, meaning your full mind. You will not do it out of madness. You will literally do it as someone who knows if I don't get something in my body, then I'm going to be as dead as this person I'm about to consume. You will know that you are eating a person, a fellow brother or sister. You will understand that it is forbidden, yet you will do it because you have nothing to eat. You will attack the weakest, the women, the children, the vulnerable. This also means the elderly. And you will hate yourself as you do it, but you will do it. Israel also did it for their deep disobedience and for their open defiance to my words. And you will do it too. I have three scriptures as a witness to what God is saying. You will eat the offspring of your own body, the flesh of your sons and of your daughters, whom the Lord your God has given you during the siege and the distress by which your enemy will oppress you. Deuteronomy 28 and 53. The hands of compassionate women, this means delicate women, the most fancy, the type you can never imagine doing this. The hands of the delicate women boiled their own children. They became food for them because of the destruction of the daughter of my people. This is from the book of Lamentations 4 and 10. Therefore, fathers will eat their sons among you, and sons will eat their fathers. For I will execute judgments on you and scatter all your remnant to every wind. This is a word that Ezekiel brought in chapter 5 of his book and verse 10. And so you can hear the Lord speaking to the apple of his eye, ancient Israel from the past, the people that he said he would set his name upon them and they would be a sign and a signet to him throughout eternity. He said that these would be his people and yet his people sometimes brought themselves to the point of such defiance and such gross practice of sin that God locked them in their own cities and left them nothing to eat but their own children and themselves. And so the famine that the Lord mentioned this will be like will be the famine that happened in Russia. And I will get to that famine. The next part is called refugees. You will sit in the foreign centers of the world you will sit in massive processing refugee camps waiting to receive assistance. America, when you run away, you will run away too late and with nothing. You will never believe me until it's too late. And that too is your punishment. To hear the word and call the, to hear the word of the Lord and call it a lie 
Isn't that your snare? Isn't that your trap? Indeed, the Lord sent a lying spirit into them, and it deceived them to think that they were unbeatable. It made them think that they were unconquerable until their gates were burned to ashes and their soldiers lay dead in the streets. The prophecy about soldiers laying dead in the streets is called the mother of seven. You can find that. That's been made into a video, and it also is a written prophecy on the blog. I think that is from 2021. And what God is saying here, the prophecy about running to different nations of the world, sitting in the foreign centers of the world, one of those places will definitely be Canada. Another place that people will run for safety is definitely Mexico. And the prophecy about Americans jumping that high border wall, the wall that God said, you built that wall and you, you're, you're using it against the Mexicans now to keep them out and you wanted to get it as high as possible. And the Lord said, this wall will be a trap for you. This wall will be a difficulty for Americans as they want to flee now away from the types of things that will be happening here because to get little people over that wall, little children, small kids over that kind of several foot high wall that has been built so tightly and along such long areas of the country, it will backfire on this country. So Mexico will have um, such a place and a processing center, a foreign processing center. But as he was saying this, I just saw a lot of people sitting, you know, just sitting on the ground. There wasn't chairs or anywhere nice to sit. It was just a lot of people sitting so shocked and so stressed that most people were not talking and they were just sitting with their knees up to their chest and just holding their knees and talking in small groups. And they were waiting. A lot of people were waiting in processing centers to see if countries would accept them. Please understand that not all countries will offer aid to America when she is at her lowest. Not everybody will have a soft heart. Many people will be rejoicing. You will see, I know for sure, the Lord said that the Ab Arabs will be at the apex of their joy when this nation is going through her problems. And so that's what I was seeing people in foreign centers. And what, what I was receiving as I was seeing this picture is that people were waiting with anxiousness to find out if they would be allowed to be processed into that country to at least become an official part of that country, able to get help, able to get resettlement, able to get a place to stay and things like that. And so there will be massive processing refugee camps of Americans waiting to receive assistance. And God says, here's the problem, that people don't know that a lying spirit has been released into the nation. And that lying spirit, if I had to give it a name, I would tell you that the lying spirit the Lord has allowed to enter America is pride. Pride is the reason that God says you never want to believe him until it's too late. So some people have been watching these prophecies. This is their fourth year. That means that they found me when I started in May 2019, and they have somehow managed to stick with me until now. And yet, if you ask them, do you have a passport? Do you have a single shred of paper that might grant you access to leave the country? They're still sitting with their hands folded because they think that this channel is something to watch not pray about and act upon. And God said, that too is your punishment. Some people hear the word and do nothing with it. Some people hear the word and they angrily reject it. And the, he says, you call it a lie, but that's your trap. So reject the Lord's word, but you don't know that a lying spirit is in you. And the lying spirit of pride, God says, will deceive this, the people of this country until the last minute to think that they can't be beaten. People will think that they can't be beaten by Iran. They can't be touched by Iraq. They can never be revenged upon by Syria. They can never be revenged upon by any of the people that they've gone and fought wars with. They're unconquerable. You see Russia having its conflicts now with Ukraine and Americans are laughing, primarily laughing. Oh, they couldn't take over a toy factory and it's just a bad move on Putin's part. And a lot of things are being said and all those things that are being written everywhere the Lord is observing those things. This is a people who think that they are unconquerable. And God says, this deception that you cannot be beaten, that America cannot fall, that Babylon will live always. He says it will carry on in the hearts of the people for that is the trap that is upon them to keep thinking that way right until the gates of the nation are burned and soldiers are laying dead in the street. The prophecy, if you want to find out about people going to Mexico, it is called Isaiah 13 and Russia and war. That is what it is called. God says, tell them I have no quarrel with them. 
the foreigners. I have no quarrel with the foreigner in the land of Babylon. He said, even the visa holders, and this is the same thing he was telling me last night, August 22nd, 2023. He said, even visa holders, whether you are a 10 or a 20 year visa holder, the Lord says, you've been here for 10 or 20 years on a green card or something else, a work permit. He says, I have no quarrel with you. He says, you are not innocent because you are fools like Lot who chose Sodom and Gomorrah to live in without knowing what a den of iniquity he had settled in. But I will show you mercy. If you hear my voice, if you know my voice now as I am speaking to you, come out of Babylon and be separate. Come out of her and go home. Otherwise, when I strike the land, you will be struck with her and you will pay the same price with those who are born of the land. This judgment is for the land of Babylon and her sons and daughters. But whoever will come out of Babylon, hear the word of the Lord and come out from her and be separate. So the first way to come out of Babylon is you that are still listening to songs with filthy lyrics, all the F words that they are using, they're coming out of your mouth. And yet at the same time, you say that you are a child of God. You are a deceived person and the truth and the light of the Holy Spirit is not active in you. You are still following all the little trendy cats and whoever cats in the music industry. You are still lining up and going to concerts where you can see them putting up two hundred foot holograms of demons and chanting words over the crowd and things like that, going to Coachella and things like that, still embedded deep in the matrix of a fallen harlot nation. If you are any type of Christian, whether you are old or young, stuck in shadows and lights, pretending that you are gods and living like Satan's, God says that's the first level of separation. You must repent of participating in Babylon's sins. This means any of the sins that you have heard me mentioning on this blog for the last four years, repent to the Lord in full, confessing those sins that you may receive personalized, not American, personalized forgiveness from the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will receive you. And then in that cleansed status, you then begin to look at the second layer of coming out. This is a process. You have lands, you have property, you have family, you have everything. You might have never traveled in your life. You might be full of questions where to go. I cannot answer those things for you. The place I have always told people to go is back to the Lord of the prophecies. God is literally waiting for people in their prayer closets. They prefer to speak to me as if I should offer answers. But the person who sent the word to me and it has come upon me and now fallen on the nation, those who are listening and those who will receive, he is waiting for you to go back to him. He is waiting to hear your voices in repentance and prayer. And so God says he has no problem. He has no quarrel with foreigners. It's just that the the foreigners are foolish for coming to a place like Sodom and Gomorrah and sitting here with their eyes open in a den of iniquity when they can see what is happening. But he says, you will get mercy. So if you know what his voice sounds like, begin to look to yourselves and see how to find a pathway back to where you came from. The next part is a hidden secret. Famine. I will take away the bread. Even now there are several states operating below the national hunger average. They have less than recorded historical state measures say they should have on file. So what God is talking about is he said that there are several states in America that are operating below the national hunger average, meaning that they have less historically agreed amounts of food in their storage sections than they should. They may be faking their numbers or they simply may not be taking an accurate count because they don't want it seen perhaps by the federal government that they are operating below quota. He says, do you know this? Do you know that the big state granaries are empty? The state granary is where these states are keeping all the corn, they're keeping all the soy, they're keeping all the wheats and the other types of flour that they make. He says, do you know that the granaries are empty? And do you know that there is next next to nothing 
and nothing in your silos. God said something curious. He said, have you noticed that your cereals lately contain much more sugar, but less grain? This means that when you open the box of cereal, whether it's kid cereal or adult cereal, you will find that each individual cornflake is very thin now. It's very brittle. It's no longer a good hunky chunk of cereal or bran. It's very fragile. And he says that with the sugary cereals, it's much more sugar and it's less grain. Have you noticed that lately? That the children's puffs or whatever, when you put them in the milk, they're just literally have to press them down because they are so, so light. He says, do you know that they're rationing the wheat, the flour and grains of all kind? Did you notice that the hot dog and the hamburger buns are much lighter now that they feel as light as air? That's because they are fluffing the bread. And he said this in capital letters. And as he said, fluffing the bread, this is what I saw. I saw bread was baking, but I also saw that piped and pressurized air was being blown all through the, the, the dough of the bread as it was baking. And what that pressurized air was doing is that it caused millions of tiny bubbles to form in the dough. So the bread was still baking and it was taking the shape and form of the baking pans. But what happened is it was the same size as before, meaning the same looking loaf of bread, but because of the air being pumped through it, the bubbles give the, gave the flour too much lightness until half of the actual volume of every loaf of bread being baked was just air. I saw that it's air that we're eating. Bakers in America are fluffing their bread and other baked goods in order to keep producing the same amount of goods, but using less flour. So if you need this amount of flour to make, make this amount of loaves, they're cutting the amount of flour that they're using and then they're causing the loaves to puff up to the same size by pumping them with air. He says it's a way to conserve flour and to have the end product look the same. Grain is being rationed in America because it is not growing. They are already marking record losses in the farming industry as the yields fall and the droughts are scorching the farms that they thought would do well, but they are not telling you that. They're keeping you distracted with bread and circuses entertainment and summer blockbuster movies and going to concerts and events, you will literally never see the problems arising in this economy until they are on top of you. You will continue to hear peace and safety until the day sudden destruction comes upon you. And so America is the first country on record to change the time honored description of what inflation is. Inflation is too consecutive negative quarters of growth, but America has said, no, actually it's three. And so by herself and by changing some stuff in Wikipedia, America has changed what economic terms have meant since people began studying the science of economics. The lies are being told that there's no inflation, that the nation's industry is booming, that employment is up when most people can't find a job to save their lives. They're doing terrible jobs, terrible hours, terrible pay. No one is happy. And yet the TV is telling us that this economy hasn't been more robust. God says that that kind of talk is called peace and safety, and it will keep going on in America because this is a propaganda nation that will continue lying to the people until sudden destruction falls on the people. But concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves perfectly know that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. For when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them, just like labor pains falling upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. The Lord says, you are surprised that I speak to you this way. You are amazed. You are offended and astounded. This is not God. That's what you say. It's not God. It's all a lie. It's a false prophecy. It is no falsehood. It is the word of the Lord. It is indeed I, the Lord Yah Almighty, speaking to you. I've come to you for your final end. And I say that you will never be what you claim. You will never be great again, Babylon. You will never hold power in this world again. You have fallen and your insides will turn out and show the whole world what you are. 
you will never attain the height of your former greatness. Instead, you will go down to a level of wretchedness not seen in modern history, not seen since the Russian famine, where they also ate one another for food. This Russian famine, when I was writing this prophecy, I had to pause because this was just, I had to see. And so I simply went on and I typed Russian famine cannibalism. And what came up is some really complicated name that I can't pronounce, but it was also called something like Holomodor, Holomodor famine. And what happened with that famine is it was just a mix of terrible factors, but one crucial factor, the Russian civil war was going on. And on another side, the Russian economy was having a terrible downward um, turn, but one crucial factor in what caused this famine between 19, the springtime of 1921, all the way into 1922 is that the government deliberately starved the people. They deliberately saw to it that the food distribution was terrible. They deliberately saw to it that the regions where the famine was worst were the regions they paid the least attention to. People literally laid in the street and died and other people took them in the evening and sold them as meat and other people bought them because they were starving. They ate children. The pictures of this event are truly shattering is the only thing that I can say. And what the Lord is saying to America here is that America is about to enter this level that is not seen in modern history. Now you might ask and say, but 1921, we had cameras and indeed there were cameras for there are pictures of this event on the internet, this terrible famine that came to Russia. But what God is saying here when he says never seen in modern history is that there's not a single person who was living in 1920 and 1921 uh, or 1921 and 1922 who's alive today. That's, that's over a hundred years. 1921 ended a hundred years in 2021. And so there's not a human soul that, that went through that famine who could speak to us now in the modern age to warn us and tell us, yes, it is true. It is true for people who exist in the era of cameras and technology to also eat one another. And that's why God said, ever since the Russian famine in ancient modern history up to now, no eye has seen what he will do here in America. You will be embarrassed and ashamed. You will be denigrated. You will have to beg. You will ask for food. You will make human rights appeals for humanitarian aid. You will need aid, America. You will depend on aid. You invented the term, but now you will kneel down and ask for it and someone will give it to you. You will request medical aid and you will get ships of dried goods. This is dried food that can survive a long journey. And you will also get secondhand clothes from other countries. Bales of used clothing will come to this America that once produced world-class textiles. And that is how you will cover your shameful nakedness. You will be made poor and impoverished. And by this, he means by seeing this thing happen that I'm telling you, you will learn who was speaking to you all along. You will learn who I am. And so I've spoken in the old prophecy that I, um, that I saw in a, in a vision. I saw ships arriving in the New York Harbor and they were coming from Europe. One of the ships was definitely from Spain and I'm not sure who the other countries were, but, um, the EU was sending ships here with medicine and they were sending ships here with food. But now God has even added in that secondhand clothes will come from other countries. So America used to export, I'm not sure she still does, a lot of secondhand clothing to other countries in bales, which means these large, large bundles that are tied together. And then you cut the cord on them and then all the clothes spill out. And you try to find what's usable and what could be sold as vintage or whatever. But God says that used clothing will be coming here to America that once used to produce world-class cloth herself and export it because that's how shamefully naked and poor and impoverished people will be. And God says, when you see this thing taking place in this once great nation, then you will understand that everything that I have said to you thus far for the last four years on the master's voice 
was not coming to you by any other spirit except him. He said that you will learn who I am. You do not discern the times. You don't discern my voice and you don't discern my messengers. When I speak to you, you say, I don't listen to anyone. I only listen to God. And this is true. I will bring the prophecy and then people will say, don't trust her. She's a human being. Go and ask God. Or they will say, I listen to no man. God will tell me. And yet God says, but I'm speaking to you through a servant and you mock the servant and you cause harm by your deeds and by your words. A curse is on you, a great curse. You have cursed yourselves by how you have reacted and you have cursed yourselves by refusing to eat my flesh and drink my blood. When God says that you have refused to eat his flesh and drink his blood, he is simply telling you that you have refused to keep communion with the Holy Spirit. You have refused to come into oneness with the spirit of God that is bringing you these prophecies that are supposed to trigger deep regrets. You hear that this is a country where people are sleeping with infants below the age of one year old. You hear me describing what I have seen, that human beings are being eaten and that blood is being taken from the blood banks and put into smoothies so that rich old people don't get old and die too fast. You hear of these kinds of things taking place in the same nation. And then people, their only response is, this is a lie because who can lie in such intricate detail? And so God says that your very reactions, the very reactions of people, not only in America, but all around the world, except that the foreign reactions don't matter. It is the reaction of the people who are judged that God is watching to see. Will there be repentance? Will there be sorrow? Will they move beyond the shock and be sorry for what they are hearing the nation has done? But they call it lies and cast it away. They mock the God, the Lord's words and they mock the person and curse the person who's bringing it. And so God says that the curse is actually back on you. Your own reactions have cursed you and you have cursed yourself by refusing to come into communion with the spirit to eat the flesh and drink the blood. He says, you have defiled my name in curses. Jesus Christ, you say it as a swear word. I am blasphemed in the streets by children. So how can you answer for the things that you have done? How can you explain yourself? What intercession can be made for you? And the curse that is upon America is Isaiah chapter six and 10. I'm going to read it on camera because I've never actually read it on camera before. Isaiah chapter six, and I will take it from verse nine. And he said, go and tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their eyes heavy and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. And then Isaiah asks God and says, Lord, how long? Meaning he's asking God, well, Lord, how long you sent me? And this is the message you sent me to go and tell the people, keep on listening, but you're not understanding anything that I, Isaiah, am saying. And keep on seeing what is happening in your immediate environment, but you don't perceive it, meaning that you're looking at things happening around you right now, but you are not fully understanding what the overall picture is and what that means for the nation. And God's message is go and tell them that their hearts will stay dull. Go and tell them that their ears will stay blocked. Go and tell them that their eyes will stay shut, meaning even if you put the solution in front of them, people in America will not see it as a solution. They will see it as a problem. When prophets are sent into the midst to start preaching in the grocery stores, people are annoyed. And the, the Walmart people come and say, please get out of the store. You're annoying the shoppers. People are annoyed at hearing the final last day's messengers crying out over this land in every state, repent because the Lord is about to judge us. He says, let them stay like that, lest they open their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, because if they did, they would return and be healed. And so Isaiah asks, he's looking for hope. He says, well, Lord, how long will this be for? And God gives him a clear answer. He says, until their cities are destroyed and nobody is living in them, 
until every house has no man in it and until the land is utterly desolate, until God has carried the men of the nation far away and all the forsaken places are very many in the land. And so that is what God says is operating here in America. This is why you speak and the words are flung back in your face to other messengers who may be doing the same work. This is why you raise the alarm and family members that you're trying to warn tell you that you're crazy and that you're a problem and they block you everywhere. So the next part is the flag will come loose and the glory has departed. God says, I'm already against you. I've turned my face away from you and I will blow your flag away. I will loosen it from the flagpole and blow it away. On the day that you see the American flag being loosened from the flagpole and flying away in the wind, know that you are Ichabod. Ichabod means, kabod means glory, and it in the Hebrew just means no. That word Ichabod literally means no glory. It also means where is the glory? And the answer is there is none. You are rejected and you are removed from the seat of honor and someone else, another will be given your place. That person or that nation that will take America's place. Everywhere America has been known and reflected, you will see the nation of Russia, not even China, but Russia in that place. The glory of God will depart from America on the day that the American flag comes loose from the flagpole. And from that day, you will be accursed. God says, whether it happens at a large event or small one, whether it happens at a school or at a military base, it will be seen and it will make the news. On that day, America will be cursed and in her final role as mystery Babylon, thus says the Lord. And so the Lord was telling me this and I was seeing somewhere an event, something was happening, but I'm not able to say at all what type of event it was because the event was happening lower down in the frame of reference and all that God was showing was higher up the pole. And then all of a sudden the flag came loose from the pole and flew off and the people were like, oh, oh no. And that little segment made the news. Now, whether it will be national news or whether it will just happen in a small town and only people in a little town or just state news or even local news says today, a shocking event. God says that wherever it happens in America, when that event happens, America will, will know that she's fully rejected by God and that that flag flying away is equal to um, 1 Samuel 4, when the glory departed from Israel and they captured the Ark of the Covenant and the Philistines took it away to their nation. The next part of this prophecy is speaking about Europe, and I hope that people will listen. In. Listen, there's many, many people since I started, there are many people who challenge and will say, why do you only speak about America? What kind of person only talks about America? But what you don't understand is that God is focusing on the nation that is central to life on the planet as it is. And God has no positive words for that nation. And God has raised me up to speak to America. But what I will tell you foreigners is that when you listen to what God has to say, to these next nations, I don't think that you will be very interested in asking me on social media, what is God saying about my country in our continent? What is God saying about my country? What is God saying about Uganda? What is God saying about Brazil? I doubt very much that when you hear what God is saying to these European countries, that anyone will want celestial to bring a message from God to that nation for the messages that God gives me are judgment prophecies. And should you ever hear your country showing up in one of these videos, I do not think that you will like it. The future of France, the French people will suffer. They will endure economic setbacks and many indignities to their country. Their current government will fall and a new one will take its place. Emmanuel Macron will be deposed but the new government that will come in are forerunners to the beast system. France will fight and battle for her sovereignty, but she will not retain it. She will scan her retinas. She will scan her palms. She will give up privacy in order to continue. And in the last days, she will form a part of the beast. So I recently uploaded a video that was showing how the prophecy from September 2021 is rapidly 
um, taking itself towards fulfillment. The Lord showed me in September, 2021 in a dream, the coming of a palm scanning device that takes place in two sections. One of it is a clear living display. That one is not here yet because as I saw, this thing will literally grow up from the podium when the user is approaching. So it is responsive living plastic. I called it, or some kind of living clear mold that looks like glass, but is not glass. And as a person is approaching, it to use that palm scanner, it grows up and forms itself into a display and you scan your palm on top. But the other one I saw in 2021 was a black scanner and that scanner was not alive. You simply fix it at a point of scale. And then I saw that people would scan their hand information. And now we have Amazon owner of one of the biggest supermarket chains saying that they will be finished rolling out this thing by the end of 2023. And so God is saying here that France also is going to fight to be a sovereign nation, but she will not be able to keep that up. She will end up being forced into the B system, scanning her retinas to get entry into places. Scanning the retina is one of the things that the beast will say that we need to take biometric imprints of the eye because no one can fake your eye. France will sc scan her palms and God says that France will have to give French people will have to be to give up a lot of privacy data in order to continue. When he says continue, he's talking about their daily lives. But at the end, France will form a part of the beast. The current government of Emmanuel Macron will be deposed to be deposed as a leader is to do the walk of shame. It means that you are put down as a king or a leader by force by the will of the people or by some sudden upheavals that come into the country and you're unable to keep your seat. When you're deposed as a president, it carries shame. The Lord says that sometimes being deposed can happen like a coup, but not always does it have to be violent. The leader is always forced to leave though. He is always removed by force and usually in sudden and embarrassing circumstances. A Russian occupied territory. This is the next part. And God is still talking to France. And this is what he said. France, this is your future. In the last days, Russia will come down to you. They will descend their great mountains and they will come down and overthrow you. Russia will make you a satellite. You will be a little Russia. Russia will cross your borders. They will occupy your territory. They will fly their flag. They will overtake French streets, thoroughfares. This is the roads, the smaller byways, not the main streets and the bistros. This is the French cafes and the little fancy places that they love to stop and have meals. They will sell Russian beer in your wineries. They will sell Russian bread on your streets. Russian children will sit in your schoolhouses and you will be a protectorate of Russia. And so this is something that I've been saying for two years now. The Lord showed me that as Russia increases it world, its world dominance, that Russia is going to start doing territory grabs. I've spoken many times about the personality of President Vladimir Putin, as the Lord has shown it to me, that this man is a strategist, that this man sits and spends a lot of time playing chess and other games of strategy against himself. He doesn't necessarily need to play with an opponent. He's quite happy to play by himself. Another thing to test his own mental skills against himself and get sharper in a game of one. And what God showed me is that when Putin is playing chess, he will play for one side of the chessboard as if it's not him that's going to play on the other side. So he plays here the very best move for this player. And then he will go and play the very best move against himself. And this is how he sharpens himself. Another thing the Lord showed me is that this man is a map aficionado. He looks at the very old maps of how Europe used to be divided. And one thing that he is very interested in is how much territory Russia used to occupy before it lost some territory here and lost some territory there. The Lord says that Vladimir Putin is very interested in going back to the days of Peter the Great. This is the Russian ruler that this man identifies himself with the most. Peter the Great, the time of Peter the Great and Saint, and, and not Saint, uh, Queen Catherine the Great. Those were times of very mighty power for Russia. The Lord says that Putin is in love with the era of the Tsars, where there was extreme Russian power, Russian opulence, Russian money, and Russia was a monarchy that was very great at that time. He wants the land back, and God says that 
for instance, this thing with Ukraine is actually, and I've shared it in 2022, God says that Putin is actually just testing the waters to see how the international community will respond in the modern times when a country wakes up and simply starts to take big chunks of another country. And the Lord says that so far, Putin feels that the response is just little swats at a fly. He says it doesn't move him at all. And he thinks that so far the experiment has been very successful because there's been a lot of talk, but nothing actually happens. In the last days, Russia will become very massive. Russia will grow down from the top of Europe like a red blood stain. And the Lord says she will grab a lot of territory. And one country I've always said will become Little Russia, and here he uses the phrase, is France. Russia will cross the French border and France will come under Russian occupation. That means when you are under occupation, someone is not just surrounding you in a siege from outside. They cross your border. They'll be marching crap, crap, crap in the streets. You will see them. And the Lord said that the Russian flag will be raised and flown in France. They will be in the streets and sitting in the cafes and asking French people to serve them and bring them food. They will be selling Russian beer in the wineries of France and selling the particular type of bread that they like in Russia instead of their French type. Russian children will be going to French schools and France will be a protectorate. And God says to France, if you try to fight the bear as she will be in her final format, this final format is the format I'm always talking about. So whatever Russia people see on TV, that's what they base their opinions on. That's what they comment on. And that's what they think it's going to be like. Russia in the last days, God says, there is not a single country that is going to make a single squeak. And that includes NATO. NATO will say nothing and do nothing when Russia begins territory grabs. Russia is going to get back all the former states of the Soviet Union. And the two ways God says she will do it is she will speak to them nicely and after a while, they will begin to have fond and nostalgic memories, and they will go back to her willingly, or she will threaten them, and they will go back because they will not want to end up like America ends up. So God says to friends that if you try to fight last day's Russia, as she will be completely transformed, as she will be swollen with territory and working with the kind of weapons that God says we have never seen on earth, France, you will be destroyed. God says that Russia will threaten to nuke you the same way she nuked America. And because of that, you and many territories in the East and the West of Europe will agree to be Russian satellite states, protectorates, just for the sake of continuing to fly your flag and keeping your territory intact. And I've said this many times in many of the Russian prophecies, that when other countries see what Russia does to America, when Russia comes to them and say anything, because their leaders are wise, they will make some kind of agreement that allows them to keep sovereignty. When you are a protectorate, you remain an independent state. So you don't lose your independent and you don't have to be called little Russia. When God is saying little Russia, he's saying it in quotation marks to say that Russia will have so much influence over her protectorates that you will see her influence stamped on the nation, but you will also see the French influence and the Italian in influence and the Spanish influence. You will still see those countries looking like themselves. But God says that America will become a colony, which means that they will play Russian on the TV. It will be the internal affairs of Russia, the internal affairs of America will be Russian run. When you are a protectorate, you get to run your own internal affairs. But when you want to do external things, like you want to make a treaty with another country and things like that, your protector state gets a say in what you do. And so God says that when France sees what Russia will do to America, they will quickly agree. And many countries in Southern and Eastern Europe will also fall in line. God says, France, if you fight, you will go down. But if you agree, Russia will let you live and Russia will let you have freedom and even some kind of solidarity among yourselves. This is the word of the Lord. And the mountain range that exists sort of cutting Russia off from the rest of Europe. There are two great mountain ranges when he says they will descend from their mountains, meaning that Russia will come down those mountains and start to flood through Europe for occupation and conquest. It's the Urals mountain and the Caucasus the Caucasus mountains. 
The next thing God says is something that was in my prophecies and I've not revealed it until now. The Lord says that Germany is a Russian ally. Germany is not a Russian ally now. Germany is in Europe, sitting right there, one of the leading nations, one of the, one of the, the leaders of the EU, but in the prophecy that is called the Kings of the East, where God was talking about the two Koreas joining and will join up with Russia and China and Japan and um, Taiwan and many other allies to come here as a successful conquering force, it surprised the skin off me for me to hear the Lord say, and Germany, and I said, Lord, and Germany, what? And he said, and Germany will lay a hand on America. So there is a prophecy here from, I think it's 2020, early 2020 or 2021, that is called Dinner at the UN. And I saw that America was drunk, so she was unaware of her surroundings, and she was just talking and babbling and doing the most. And Russia and China were watching her keenly because she was drunk at this table of international nations. And Russia and China were gobbling up a meal. And one of the meals said sitting duck and the other meal said cooked goose. And Russia and China were having second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth, 10th, 11th helpings of the cooked goose and the sitting duck. And France and Germany were sitting there and they knew that this meal that was titled sitting duck cooked goose was actually America, that these two nations were consuming up with an insatiable appetite but neither one of them warned America. Neither one of them told her you're in danger. And I saw that they were not consuming any of the meal, but that was a long time ago. God is saying now in the end times, this is further to the future. It's not on your TV yet. Germany is going to team up with Russia, whether directly or in support, because God says that Germany will want to go back to her former glory and her former power her former militarization, which means that she will finally have an army again as she used to in the glorious days of Bismarck and Prussia. And together with Russia, God says she will touch America. An old debt will be repaid. That old debt, if you just look briefly on the internet, you will know that among the many indignities that Germany suffered for being the bad guy in World War I and World War II is that America occupied Germany for 11 years after World War II. So they kept a standing army there. They also divided the country into four pieces and gave the pieces one to each country. And guess who took one of the pieces? That's right, France. God says France. That when Russia is controlling you, Germany is going to look at you and do nothing to help you because they still remembered what you did from the old war. Germany lost all arms. She lost the right to have military personnel in a standing army and she was stripped of anything that can be used to make war. There was a reparation debt placed on her of three billion and those are just some of the things that happened for being a loser in war. The next thing the Lord says is that France and Luxembourg will be taken over and Belgium will be taken over too by Russia. And now we come to a very important part of the prophecy, stunning revelations of the Lord. Please listen. This part is against the nation of Switzerland, the nation that everybody thinks is small and quiet and has clean hands. The Lord has given me almost a full page of this nation's history as he sees it and what he will do will leave Switzerland basically nothing. The judgment of Switzerland, the Swiss franc will be toppled. You will be poor. Bankers of Switzerland, hear the word of the Lord. You will be poor. Your credit is ironclad in the whole world. The Swiss bank is the banker's bank the go-to bank. But God says, I will impoverish you. And I will go to those storage boxes and the safety deposit boxes, and I will rob all the secrets that you have in it. For many of you are Nazis. Nazis. Reformed Nazis. Hidden Nazis. Secret Nazis. And your secrets are in those vaults. Did you think you could hide from me? Do you think I don't know who you are? I know your bloodlines. I know your families. I know your secret crimes. 
I know that all your letters and your confessions are in those safety deposit boxes, and I will rob them out and expose them to the world. Your long protected identities will be exposed. I will show them who you are, bankers of the world, Nazis, war criminals, building for yourselves a new life and a new legacy in the Americas and other safe zones, a new last name, and for some of you, you went as far as a facelift. You had surgery and completely transformed your face. You thought you could hide, but I made you and I know you and I will expose you for who you are. So let's stop right there. The Swiss franc, an ironclad currency. You show it anywhere and it's good to go. God says the bankers of Switzerland have done evil. They have been building an irreproachable front of house name for themselves. The Swiss bank is the banker's bank. The place where credit is always good. The go-to bank, but God says there's going to be poverty in the pockets and raging through the homes of the Swiss bankers because he's going to go into the storage boxes and he is going to, excuse me, please, rob and expose their secret identities He's going to show all the Nazi secrets in there because the Swiss are reformed Nazis. And as I, you will hear as I go along, they have worked with and served the Nazis. He says you've got secrets in the vaults. You've got letters in those vaults in the safety deposit boxes. And you've got confessions that you have written, but God says that they will be robbed out and exposed to the whole world. And everyone will know who these Nazi lineages and Nazi people are, for they are war criminals and they ran away to America, the Lord said, and other safe zones that he did not mention to me. A new last name, some of them changed their last name, some of them changed their whole name, and some of them got facial surgery because they were too well known and associated with the Nazi regime. They got facelifts, surgery to transform their face, but God says you can change your face, but I made you and I know you and I'm still going to expose you. The next part is called Nazi war criminals. The Lord says Nuremberg may have missed you. This is the Nuremberg trials of 1945 to 1946. Nuremberg would have, may have missed you, but I saw you getting on the boats and the planes. You got on private flights. You got on chartered flights. I saw you escaping like rats into darkness to start a new life somewhere else. And I'm going to reveal it. I have your letters and I have your memoirs and I have your confessions. I am the Lord. I have everything, all the evidence and the proof and I will expose it at the right time. God says you're going to be on primetime TV with your faces and your name, your true identity, not the identities that you stole from the dead and that you assumed in your new homelands. Some of these Nazis actually took the name of prominent Jews that they had killed and they came here as Jews when they are not. They came here and they've been playing the victim role for however long. Many of them are not alive. It was a long time ago but they stole dead people's identities and came here to live as those people. But God says that he will put the accurate name to the accurate faces, the true identities and not the stolen ones on prime time TV. And all the people in their new homelands will know who these people are. You will be known for who you are and your descendants would rather die of shame than face the exposure, the public hate, the accusations and the dead victims' voices of the past. They would rather die than endure the shame and trauma of facing the consequences of your crimes. Did you think that you could dress up your atrocities and escape what you did? I will expose you all. And so God is saying when these things come out, the descendants and the families who have benefited from the new names and the relocation process and everything else that America did, it will be exposed. And when those people see their grandfathers and their grandmothers and their, and their patriarchs who were leading generals in Hitler's army and things like that, he says that some of them will commit suicide rather than deal with the exposure, the public hate and the accusations, and also hearing 
the dead victims of the past speaking against them. So the Nuremberg trials went from November 1945 to October 1946, and the chief chair were the United States, Great Britain, France, and the Soviet Union. And these trials were exclusively for Nazi officials that were successfully identified and caught in Germany after the Second World War. However, a very large number, 1,600 people, it could be more, but that's the conservative number estimated, a large number of top Nazi officials and scientists and people at the apex of Hitler's government were secret bought, br secretly brought to America as part of a government brain drain program called Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip was basically America being greedy as always. America saw a government that had nearly conquered Europe and was moving across the known world to eat up territory at juggernaut speed, a speed that nobody could meet or stop. Germany accelerated herself so fast and moved so powerfully that everyone was shocked. And the term for that type of war that Hitler was fighting, it's called Blitzkrieg lightning. And that was part of the symbolism of his government. When America saw that people could mobilize that fast, that they could have that kind of economies of scale, that they could move in ground forces and air forces and naval forces, sinking British ship after British ship. When she saw that, she wanted to know the inner mechanisms of how that kind of supremacy worked. And she granted total immunity and amnesty to known murderers and war criminals in exchange for them giving her all their files and all their insider knowledge of the Third Reich, especially in these areas, God said, aeronautics. I think that is the field of not just plane, but planes, but all kinds of flying things. In the area of science, in the area of medicine, and in the area of technology, all who were granted amnesty, about 1,600 persons who came here to America with and without their families, were brought here and were resettled with no consequences. They never went to jail. They never faced trial. In fact, America protected the names of these people and never handed them over to the same tribunal where she was sitting like the Puritan pointing fingers at the other lower scientists that they caught, the people who were not running the main experiments, the people who were not running the main torture centers. Those people were put on trial, but the head honchos, the brains of the operation. She brought them here under cover of night. She resettled them with no consequences, with no strings attached. She used taxpayer money to use it, God said, and she never told the public what she had done. America never knew what had happened until some of these files were redacted recently and people started making books and documentaries. This was secret, secret, top secret stuff. And God says to this very day, these Nazi families are holding the best of the top positions in the U.S. government, in U.S. intelligence, in American science, American medicine, the military, and all fields of technology today. So if you wonder who is the brainchild fathers working with the fallen angels to bring you palm scan and eye scan, look no further than these at the tip of the spear. God says they came here under new names, but he knows who they are. And yes, America is infiltrated with, and is, she is being run by control of Nazis. Prophecies that you can look at for this on the Master's Voice blog are called Lockstep, Nazis in America Part 2, Nazis in America Part 3, and the Nazis will return. And he continues with Switzerland, Credit Suisse, Credit Suisse. And he said, not the bank. So God is not talking about the bank that was recently embattled and crashing Credit Suisse Bank. No, he says that is a term. It means Swiss credit. And when I look it up, it indeed is a French phrase that means Swiss credit. It is a French phrase, the unshakable French Swiss credit. Look at me. Look at my face. This is the Lord speaking. I will break you. He's talking to Switzerland. You will never harbor criminals again. You will never help another failed dictator, another child rapist, another deposed despot, 
another tyrant or another regime. You are altogether filthy, Switzerland. You are famous for being neutral, but you are loyal to murderers and dictators. Grinning at them, you offered them to use your bank vaults, carefully keeping Nazi gold and African dictators' money while they slaughtered their people. And the Lord said that if the evil president who has an account in Switzerland ever got killed in a coup attempt in his country, Switzerland kept the money and added it to their national reserves. They added it to the reserves. He said, famed for neutrality. So Switzerland is famous for being the country that stayed neutral during World War I and World War II, but now God is revealing that all that neutrality was just to enable them to be able to help all sides as it served their national interests. Your hands are covered with blood, Switzerland. I will nuke you with a Russian missile. I will destroy you in the war. You are just a dot on the map. You will pay for your war crimes, for helping dictators steal from their own countries. You caused mothers and infants to go hungry. You caused the deaths of millions through starvation and hunger by causing failed government programs to never happen because the money for them was stolen. The Lord says, you required no paperwork. You didn't ask any questions about the millions of dollars that would flood into your economy from one man. So this is one president that steals $800 million in aid money from his country, hops on a flight, comes over there, and Switzerland is like, right this way, sir, and takes him to a private bank vault and asks no question about how one guy coming from some small nation, perhaps in Africa or South America, is coming to make that kind of deposit. He said that Switzerland was grinning at dictators and thieves and stealing national developed money out of the mouth, national development money out of the mouths of mothers and babies, causing millions to die through starvation and hunger because the government programs that should have been created for those people to benefit never happened because the money was stolen and Switzerland gave the stolen money a home, asking for no paperwork and asking no questions about where the money was coming from. You actively hindered development for those who needed it most. You have killed Africans in particular by helping their leaders to rob their nations and hide the wealth in your banks. I will blot you out. I will eradicate the Swiss franc. I will scatter the banking system of the world and yours will go down with it. So the famed Swiss banking system, the famed Swiss bank account will be no more in the future. God says, Russia will trample over Switzerland the way you trampled over the rights of the oppressed. Switzerland, your hands are covered with blood and your teeth are like fangs and I am angry with you. You're hiding behind clean suits and pretending to be white as snow, but your hands are covered with blood. I will blow you out of the water. And after I'm finished with you, you will never help another rebel or another tyrant or another regime or another Nazi again. You will not survive. This is the word of the Lord. The next part is called the collapse of the global order. The US banking system is going to utterly fail and God says that not one penny will survive in the national coffers. The US banks will fail. All of them, not some of them. All of the American banks will fail and there will be no way to rescue them or make any kind of emergency relief plan. So what Mr. Paulson and friends managed to pull off complicit with the Fed in 2008, God says that nothing of that caliber is going to be able to put out this dumpster fire that will come to the United States banking system. And this very crucial part that God keeps bringing in every prophecy since I lost the audio on that video, please go back to that video that is called Worse Than 2008 Part 3. Crucial pieces were missing. God said that too big to fail it's a faulty doctrine and he's going to cancel it in America. I don't care how big a bank is. I don't care if it has 40 million depositors. Every bank in the United States is going to fail. 
That's what he was saying. Too big to fail will fail. Tell them from me, Celestial. Too big to fail. Their experts will be confounded because he said there's no living expert in America that will be able to explain what's going on. And the reason they will not be able to explain it is because God says that what will come will be worse than 2008. And the experts were alive in 2008. But what is going to come is also going to be worse than the Great Depression. And the experts from the Great Depression are not with us at this time to tell us how bad it was. So if it's going to be worse than the Great Depression, then it is fair to say that nobody who has ever lived in America has ever seen what's going to happen in the U.S. banking system. And when the, the banking system of America goes down, it's going to cause the collapse of the entire global order. And God has been saying that they're going to use this thing to bring in their new world the new system, the beast system, the NW final letter that is a circle. You know what that is. It will be a total collapse and the U.S. economy will go into free fall. When things go into free fall, you wake up the next morning and bread is going to be costing $900 and that's a cold, hard cash $900 or something. That's what it means. Everything, markets are plummeting, the stocks are plummeting, and unfortunately, people will take their lives. They also will be plummeting. And he says that it's a completely orchestrated crash. It is planned. It is an orchestrated crash, which means there are minds that have been working towards this ending for longer than people understands. understand. The next part is called a word to the nations. And the prophecies that you can look at concerning what I'm saying are called U.S. economic crash worse than 2008. This prophecy was given on the 26th of January, 2003. The other one is called the nascent rise of corn, coin, March the 2nd, 2023. And the other one is called money down the drain. September 8th, 2018 is when I got this one. Money down the drain is one of the oldest prophecies where I ever saw that there was a financial slump in America that caused the money to be devalued by 60%. And when that happened, it triggered, triggered horrible changes in the global economy. So many people around the world went into instant poverty and the hatred against America went off the Richter scale because of their financial irresponsibility that basically put people in the red right away. So hear what God is saying, a word to all nations, foreign countries, Hear the word of the Lord. When you are going hungry due to financial devastation of your economies and currencies, all of which will happen as a result of the staged crash of the American banking system, know that what you are going through was caused by the heads of finance of Babylon. Remember who made you go hungry. Remember who made you poor and without money. Remember who made you lose your home. Even Americans will become poor by their own government. Their own government will crash their money and use it to take every piece of wealth out of their hands. This is the new world order. So God is basically saying to all countries out there, when you wake up and milk is costing 900 of your dollars or your money, know who's making you go hungry because they were playing and doing evil things with their economy and their money. He says, when your economy and your money now starts to stagger and crash, know that it's because America staged an internal crash and the heads of finance in Babylon, that is the shady people sitting at the very top of the pyramid. They are the reason that you're going hungry. They are the reason that you will lose your home and your home loan will come due and you will default on your car loan and home loan and all the dangers that happen when the global economy crashes. God says, remember who made you poor and caused you to have no money because even Americans are going to experience this from their own government. The government will take every piece of wealth out of people's hands. Now you understand why the catchphrase that they chose to go with in 2020 was, you will have nothing and be happy. And then God began to talk about debt and he said, America's debt will be completely wiped out when the money fails. He says, they're counting on that, the great reset to set the clock back to zero so that they can build their new world order. So people will hear that debt is about to be wiped out and they will think it's such a flex. It's great, we need to be debt free, but God is saying that when that debt is wiped out, you will pay for it in blood because the new system that is coming in is a bloody system. The beast system will cut down the population of this nation to a place where whoever doesn't believe me 
It is unfortunate because the way that you will believe is when you see what will happen here. Tell them that the new system, the new world order system does not depend on, nor does it need money. God says that money will be reimagined. Money will be reset. Money will be removed and it will be taken right out of your hands. And you will have cloud money and that is all you will need in this new system. Debt will be reset. Gone. Nothing. Your house loan, student loan, the car loan, the medical loan, money that you had to go and borrow from the bank to get that surgery. And now it's a lot of money that you owe because your insurance wouldn't cover part or all of the surgery. And now you're in the hole for 30 K or more. God says that all of that is going to be wiped away. Like it's by a big er eraser and a new world system is going to be in its place. Looking back at you like the grinning head of death. So yes, they are going to sell a utopian reset. No more debt. We're forgiving all the loans, but God says that it will be looking back at the people of the nation, like the grinning head of death, which is basically a skull. The next part is called a total debt reset. You that wants your debt to be forgiven. It will be, it will be wiped out, but the price to pay for that reset is going to be written in blood. You will pay in blood for the convenience and the so-called freedom of the new world. You will lay the paving stones of Obama's kingdom with your firstborns, and he will bathe himself in the blood of the marchers. A killing field, a great sacrifice ground America will be. You want no loans? You want no debt? You will have no loans and no debt but you will also have no money, no privacy, no freedom, no privately owned wealth, no privately owned property, gone. Everything will go from commercialized to state run entities. All of it will become the government stuff and they will give you rations to survive on. Give us this day our daily bread. This is the prayer of the master, but you did not pray it. Instead, you rejected it. And so the government will give you daily bread. And so the Lord is saying that people are very keen to have this debt forgiveness. It's being teased in the press and all they're doing is just baiting the hook because they want the hook to sink down deep into the belly of the fishes who believe them. Yes, they will wipe out the debt and they have to wipe out the debt because the brand new system that they're bringing in is not going to be based on whatever binary codes and whatever computer code system that exists where current debt, all the hospital debt, medical debt, student loan debt, house debt, um, is recorded. When they reset, they're literally pressing a button that's going to wipe out all this data. And so when they wipe it out, fine, you won't owe anything anymore, but they're going to start a new system that is worse. You will wish you had the old debt to pay it back by being a private citizen who has privacy and freedoms and your uh, first amendment and second amendment rights and all the rights you will wish that you were still in a world where you could go to your two jobs and work and slowly pay off your loan because you had autonomy then and you could hold your cash and do with it what you wanted. But when you are given cloud money and when you are given rations, which is basically having state owned places to live, this is a two family sleeve because, um, we're going to have two families living next to each other. What if you don't like that family? You're going to live next to that family anyway. This is a two child home. You are a single person. So you will live in this box because this is the size of box we've built for all the singles. How do we know they won't put the singles in dormitory cities for singles? We don't know anything about these things. And it is the mercy of God that is revealing these things. No privately owned wealth. How can Americans accept that the things they've worked for will be taken away from them and will become the government's stuff. And yet in the prophecy, the nascent rise of coin, I shared the shocking dream that God gave me of a woman and her husband fleeing at about five or 6 AM in the morning, knocking on my house door and telling me, Celestial, we're leaving. We're leaving. Your prophecy is coming true. Your prophecy is coming true. We're getting out. And they were running away by road because by that time the airports were already a no go area. And I was saying that I saw all the men whose grandfathers have ever always told them, Ben, Chuck, if anything goes wrong, jump in your truck and hit this road, that road, go up through the mountains and it will get you to Mexico by sunrise. I saw those kinds of people, people who are familiar with the environment, people who know what God called the mountain passes that go up secret trails into Canada. Those people hit the dust and they were gone. But the majority of people, especially people in the cities, 
We're stuck. I saw at gridlocks. God lifted me up either by the Brooklyn or the Verrazano Bridge here in New York. And I saw across the country gridlocks. So people were trying to flee. And there was this, uh, I guess, an emergency emergency response voice that was saying, so-and-so fleeing with gold bars in the car, fleeing with silver coins in the car, fleeing with this. Why? Because the Lord said that all the gold and all the silver and all the things that people buy now, the gold and silver dealers will come under immense pressure from the government to give up their customer list. They will threaten these people. And you think these people, when they receive a visit from the CIA or the FBI at two in the morning and someone holds a weapon to someone's six-year-old child, do you think that that person is going to think about all his customers? He's going to think about his child and he's going to say, should I print it for you or should I just simply email you the PDF? They're going to come under pressure to give up who buys from them. And that's how the government is going to come into the know of where all this stuff is in whose house, in whose possession. And so there is always more underfoot. For the debt reset, what will happen is the loans and the debt will go away, but then there'll be no money, freedom, private wealth, private property, all of it will be gone. And God says that everything in America will go from commercial, which is you work hard, and you sell your things. You work hard, you conceive your business or you conceive of your service or you conceive of your product and you sell it and that's commercial. That's a commercial run um, free market economy. You sell your thing and if there's buyers who like it, they'll buy and if there's lots of buyers, then you'll make it really good. But God says that everything is going to turn to state run entities. The government's going to basically take over people's businesses, take over generational wealth, take over everything and call it their stuff. And will give people ration and telling them you're just a single person. What do you mean you're a tech entrepreneur with $80 trillion? No, no. The only tech billionaires that will escape are the ones who are in bed with the governments already, such as Palm Scanner Bezos and friends. And so... God mentioned Barack Obama in this prophecy, and I cannot leave it out. He says that you will lay the paving stones of Obama's coming kingdom with your firstborns, and he will bathe himself in the blood of the marchers. To lay the paving stones, this is speaking of forced military conscription. And the example God gave me is what King Saul did in the Bible. When Israel got tired of having God as their king, they began to say, Samuel, give us a king. We want to be like the nations around us. We're tired of being led by this spirit that we don't see. So they had learned nothing from the 40 years previous with Moses. Absolutely nothing. They went back to the same idolatrous type of heart and approach and said that God was not good enough. And they were tired of having an invisible king. They just wanted someone with a big headdress to sit on the throne like other normal people do. And Samuel warned them and said, when God gives you a king, he will actually put a punishment inside it because the leader that will come will force your sons to join the army. He will also take the best of your goods. This is your, your land and your sheep and your cattle. He will demand taxes from you. He will tax you harshly and he will also send your sons off to fight his wars. And many of them will not come home. But they still said, because they were a rebellious people, yes, we hear you, give us the king. And so God gave them the king and exactly what prophet Samuel told them would happen to them, happened to them. Their children died fighting Saul's Philistine wars. And so when God says laying the paving stones, he's saying that Barack Obama is going to force military conscription. And I already brought this prophecy a few months ago in the super soldier prophecy. The prophecy is literally called super soldiers. And you can find it here on the master's voice channel because it is not yet written down. He says, as the beast government is fighting to establish its rule, meaning that it will be fighting the sons of freedom. It will be fighting the people who will be rebellious. It will be fighting here and fighting there and fighting wars also. Civil war, skirmishes perhaps. God says that even women and children who are 17 years old will be forced to fight American wars. This is the word of the Lord. The last part of this prophecy is called die off. And this message, God is giving it to what are called the Nordic states. The Nordic states are in Europe, up there in the icy regions of Europe. I think they are. And it is Denmark. It is Sweden. It is Norway. It is Greenland. It is Iceland. And it is Finland. And this part of the prophecy is called die off. The Nordic states will experience die off. This is all that the Lord has said about it. Die off. To die off is when you're saying that 
all your peach trees in the orchard or all your apple trees or all your plants of a similar nature all catch a similar disease under unexplained circumstances. So die off is not usually a plant disease where you can see the disease and you know where it's coming from. Maybe it was too hot temperatures that caused the plants to all die off. Die off is usually some kind of mysterious and unexplained circumstances happening. And then you find that a large number of plants or trees that share a similar nature all starts to die from the same cause. And there's no reason or root cause that the farmer can easily find. God said that this is unique to their, this is linked to the unique bloodline and genetics that are shared by the people in Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Greenland, Iceland, and Finland. And the first place that God ever mentioned this type of punishment coming upon these countries is in the prophecy that is called the many words of God. Just a moment while I get that prophecy ready. The section, if you're going to go to the blog and look for it, it is under the section that that's called population decline. The many words of God is also a video here on the master's voice. This prophecy is three and a half years old. So it's from January the 13th. 2020 and he was calling them in this prophecy the northern the northern kingdoms and he also mentioned newfoundland so the lord showed me a graph with a red line whereby all those nations that i mentioned suddenly began to experience population decline and here are the exact words that god said i will lift up my hand against them and i will remove them i will cause madness to descend on these people and those nations will have war within themselves and also war with one another. I will remove them with sickness. I will remove them with unexplained death. They will begin to die of no explained illness, but it is my hand at work. There will be extreme population decline across the Western nations, all across Europe and even the Americas. Western nations will experience steep population decline. They will become grossly depopulated and the general population of the world as a whole will go down because these are the times of the end. And so I saw that first in these um, Nordic kingdoms, in these Nordic nations, it started with old people. So I saw that old people began to get sick for no detectable reason and pass away. And of course, people were just probably thinking, oh, it's age, it's age. But the old people were fading very fast, I saw. And then right after that, the young people also began to pass away. And I saw this name that is well known in those territories that is called Bjorn. It's pronounced Bjorn, but it's actually spelled B-J-O-R-N. I saw that name and lineage being erased by a very large eraser that was hanging in the air attached to nothing. So people were getting sick and passing away. Whether it was detectable or unknown disease or some kind of biological warfare, I just saw the icy northern kingdoms become greatly depleted in number. So there were wars. I saw that they fought wars against themselves. And I saw that Sweden also was involved in these wars. And I also saw that the nation of Denmark was involved in these wars. But more than the wars to, to depopulate these areas was the unexplained way that people got sick for no reason at all and passed away. No visible sickness. There was no heart attack, nothing. I just saw, for instance, a person sitting in his house and reading a book in his own home, and then he just died. Or a person having an exercise and going for a walk with their dog, and they just died. People just seemed to die for no reason at all, and they couldn't find a cause for it, and their deaths were being filed by the coroners under natural causes. But God showed me that's just because the doctors and the coroners had no idea what to actually write on the birth certificates. And so um, the, that prophecy I just read from January 13, 2020 is called the many words of God, part two. I have delivered the full of the prophecy and explained all of it to you in your hearing. The title of this word that you are listening to here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog is the land of mystery Babylon, August 23rd, 2023. It's taken me most of today, several hours to compile this prophecy, to accurately write down what the Lord said. This prophecy is published on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog already. Now the video has been made in your hearing and you know the things that the Lord will do here and you know the reasons why he will do them because the hearts of people are obstinate 
and they kick like donkeys at the Lord's words and they put curses on the word of the Lord and curse it and say it's not true and also curse the messenger who has been bringing it to them for the last four years. And therefore, the Lord says that he will remove his hand from America, that America's flag is going to fly away. And after that, terrible judgments such as famine, such as seeing the national food stores go down, such as we have never seen before and many other things. You have heard all those words faithfully delivered in your hearing. I am celestial and this is the Lord's work. This is God's voice for the end times. This is God's speech to the nations. This is exactly how God spoke in the Bible. There is not a single word amiss that is different from what is in these Old Testament prophetic books. If you even bother to open these books and see the voice of God and how harshly he judged. I didn't say foreign countries like Moab and Ammon or the Hittites or, or the Perizzites or the Jebusites, I'm saying how harshly God judged chosen Israel. If you could only look in this word and see what the father said to his own crown jewel, then America, how can you say that God would never say the things that I say? Thank you for being with me. And until I see you again, goodbye.